Hello and a warm welcome to our unit 3 of week 1, where I will talk about some focus topics for the staging tables approach. My name is Kirstin Siebenmorgen and I'm working in the product management for the SAP S4HANA migration cockpit. I will be your host for the next units. Let's have a look at the agenda for this unit. In the last unit, you have seen in the demo how the migration cockpit works and how you can upload data with the help of an XML template file. I will give you some more information on the different ways to populate the staging tables with data. You will then get an overview on the differences between the local and the remote database connection and some information on important SAP nodes. I will close this unit with an introduction to the transport concept for the migration cockpit. First, let's have a look what different possibilities are available to fill the staging tables. You can either use XML template files or CSV files or your preferred ETL tools. For the files, there is a size limit, which is 100 megabytes. You can upload multiple files at once by using a zip file, but still there is a restriction that the combined size of all the files you want to add to the zip must not exceed the limit. Please have a look at the mentioned KBA for further information. If you have huge data volume and huge files, there is also a sample code for a file splitter tool available in the GitHub. This can help you splitting up big files. We introduced the possibility to upload CSV files with SAP S4HANA 2022. Working with CSV files is a more flexible way to populate the staging tables. It's a widely known and compatible format for sharing, uploading and migrating data. In addition, the file creation and modification are faster due to the simple structure and nature of the CSV format. You only need to fill in the data that should be migrated, no need to put comma to fill empty fields. You can also change the order of the columns. If you use the naming logic, which is provided by the SAP S4HANA migration cockpit, the zipped CSV upload file is automatically mapped to the relevant data structure, respectively staging tables. I also added the link to the help portal where you find some further information. Let's have a look at the comparison between the XML template file and the CSV file. The XML template file is a stable option for entering and editing values manually. All data for a specific migration object is contained in one file and it has a detailed information about the relevant data structure as well as an instruction about how to enter the data in the file. You see, you've seen that in Claudia's demo. It's pretty easy to fill manually. If you use the CSV file option, you need to use separate CSV files for each data structure. So you have, in most cases, more than one file for a migration object. Each sheet in the Excel template will, will reflect one single CSV file. There is no built-in protection for data formats compared to the XML template file. Using the CSV template file is an expert option. So we only recommend using the CSV files if you are automating the extraction of data from the database tables in the source system based on CSV files. If you like to see a detailed demo how to fill the staging tables with the help of CSV files, you can have a look at Unit 5 of the Open SAP course Migrating Data to SAP S4HANA Cloud Public Edition. 
On this slide, I summarized the source of information on how to fill the staging tables with XML or CSV files. There is a link to the application help, two demo videos and some further KBAs. One describes how you correctly fill the XML and refers to a, one of the most common issues when date format got corrupted by copy-pasting data. The other KBA gives some further information on how to upload CSV files and points to a user guide. There is also a third possibility available, which I mentioned before. You can fill the staging tables using either a preferred ETL tool or fill the data directly on the SAP S4HANA database. There are several blog posts available. I listed them on this slide. Each of them explains a different method to fill the staging tables and give some further information. You can have a look at them and decide which option fits best to your needs. We also recommend that you look at the knowledge base article which frequently asks questions on this topic. On this slide I will give you some more information on the system setup. First of all we have a look at the local SAP S4HANA database schema. Claudia, Claudia used it in her demo. If you use the local SAP S4HANA database schema, how does the process look? So on the left hand side, you have your data source, the legacy system with your application data. On the right hand side, you have the SAP S4HANA system, including the SAP S4HANA migration cockpit. Once you create your migration project, you select the local database schema. The staging tables will reside within the SAP S4 HANA schema. As soon as you select the migration objects to your project, the staging tables will be created in the dedicated SAP S4 HANA schema. As a third step, you then fill the staging tables either with XML template files or the CSV template files. If you start the simulation or the migration, the migration cockpit reads the data in the staging tables and inserts the data through the application interfaces to the application table. As a last step, there is a status update for the record in the staging tables that it has been processed. There's also a second possibility available when you create your project. You can also choose a remote SAP HANA database schema. You select this option if you want to fill the staging tables directly with data by using your preferred tool. The system will then generate the staging tables in a remote SAP HANA database schema. In this case, you need to create a secondary database connection with the help of transaction DBCO as a prerequisite. In addition, you also need to add the newly created connection to the table mentioned on the slide. This ensures that you can select this connection in the list of possible database connections when you create your project. Let's have a look at the system setup for the remote database connection. Pretty similar setup as before. So we have the legacy system on the left hand side and the SAP S4HANA system with the embedded migration cockpit on the right hand side. In addition, we have an SAP S4HANA system or a separate SAP HANA box with a dedicated SAP HANA database schema. This schema can also be on the SAP S4HANA target system, if that's necessary. When you create your migration project, you select the remote SAP HANA database schema. And the staging tables for the selected migration objects are created on this dedicated database schema. As a prerequisite, you need to have a secondary database connection established. 
Now you can either extract the data from your legacy system and fill the staging table through SAP or third-party tools, or use Excel or CSV template files. Again, the migration cockpit reads the data in the staging tables and processes the application interfaces and inserts the data in the application tables when you run the simulation or migration in the migration cockpit. As the last step, it also updates the status of the record in the staging tables. You can find a comparison between the local and the remote database connection depending on your SAP HANA license on this slide. Either HANA Enterprise Edition or HANA Runtime license. Important to know is that if you have a HANA Runtime license, you are allowed to fill the staging tables for the purpose of the migration with the help of XML CSV template files, ABAP programming, data services, third-party tools, but you cannot fill them directly on database level or, for example, with SAP HANA Studio. You need an application layer in between, as it is not allowed to directly write on the database with an SQL statement. For your reference, I added the legal statement on the use of third-party tools to fill the staging tables if you have a HANA runtime license. This is also published on our landing page. What can you do if you have migrated your instances and some of them cannot be migrated due to some missing customizing or some predecessor migration objects have not been migrated successfully? You will get an error list and you have the possibility to download these instances with errors into a correction file. This function is available in the action section of the migration cockpit only if you have migrated instances with error. Otherwise, this function cannot be selected. You can choose if you want to have the correction file in XML template format or CSV format. You can download the file in the monitoring screen and pass the file to the respective person who needs to check and correct the file. After the adjustments, you can upload the file again. Before you start a project, it's essential that you use the node analyzer for the migration cockpit to ensure that all corrections are implemented in your system. There is a node available which you can check, but there is also a transaction available to run the node analyzer. Transaction CNV underscore NA underscore NC. I also added some additional important SAP nodes and information. In the installation guide, you can check chapter 7. You will get some further information on the necessary roles and authorizations you need. The SAP node for the migration cockpit tool is the collective node for all releases. You can pick the relevant node for your release. There is also a composite node for the file staging content topics where you get further information on the migration objects delivered by SAP. Especially for the SAP S4HANA 2022 FPS 0 and FPS 1 version, there is a hotfix available, which you must check. I also edited a link to a blog post on how to implement the latest corrections for the migration cockpit and the KBA on how you can check the SAP hot note. Let's do a short recap for those of you who already used an older version of the SAP S4HANA migration cockpit. As of SAP S4HANA 2020, the configuration is only possible in modifiable environments. This includes the project creation, adding a migration object to a project, and all configurations in the migration object modeler. You will get more insights on the Migration Object Modeler in the following units of this week. You are not allowed to create project, add migration objects or do some configurations in non-modifiable productive systems. So if you need to make adjustments in your productive system, for example, add a migration object to your project, 
you can adjust the project in the development system and then you transport it to the respective system. This brings me to the point where I want to explain you the transport functionality in the migration cockpit. The transport functionality is available as of SAP S4HANA 2021. The transport functionality in the migration cockpit is designed to transport between systems. You assign a development package while creating a project in the Fiori application. You have seen that in the demo. Please keep in mind that the assignment cannot be changed at a later point in time. You have the possibility to add projects to a transport request in the Migration Object Modeler. You will learn more on that in the following units. As already mentioned, projects in non-modifiable systems, for example quality and productive systems, cannot be configured anymore. They can only be executed. So projects cannot be created there. You can also check the mentioned SAP node. There is a presentation attached with some further information on the transport functionality. Please keep in mind that instances in the staging tables are not transported. Let's take the following example to illustrate the transport concept. We have a development system, a quality system, a productive system and a sandbox system for testing purposes. The SAP S4HANA migration cockpit has a separation between design time and execution time activities. In the design time activities, you create the project, select the migration objects and, if necessary, use the migration object modeler to adjust the delivered content. This is only allowed in systems which are open for changes, usually development systems. You transport your project to your sandbox system. Normally, you do not do any design time activities there, but you edit the value mapping, simulate and execute the migration. If you need changes to your project, you adjust them in the development system. You normally don't do any execution time activities in the development system, but if you need to do, it's possible. As soon as you're finished with your testing in the sandbox system, you can transport the changes to your quality assurance system, execute the migration there, and then transport it to your productive system and execute the migration in the productive system. Please take care that the same release and patch level is required in the different systems. In your Migrate Your Data app, when you create a project, you need to choose a development package. This development package cannot be changed at a later point in time. You can add your migration project to a transport request. You can do that in the Migration Object Modeler. I'll come to that in a later unit. I added a link to some further information and a community blog post where you can check how the transfer between different systems works, especially if you are an, have an older SAP S4HANA release. So, let's have a look what you have learned in this unit. I've shown you the different ways how to fill the staging tables and where to find additional information. I explained you the difference between the local and the remote database schema and I emphasized the importance of the node analyzer for the SAP S4HANA migration cockpit. In addition, I explained the transport concept for the migration cockpit. In the next unit, you will gain some knowledge on best practices and challenges. See you in the next unit. Thank you.